One thing folks have noticed in these images from Ferguson each night is the equipment used by police there to control crowds. You see armored tanks, high-powered weapons, and police and military camouflage. Now, according to the Institute of Public Accuracy, the Pentagon is passing the equipment down to law enforcement agencies. Yesterday, the president urged a review of such programs, some lawmakers even proposing bills to stop militarizing law enforcement. Well, that's because some feel the police response and equipment they're using is too heavy-handed. One local chief explained the thought behind police using military equipment to Local 15's Derek Rose. Derek? Greg, several local and state agencies have the same type of military-style equipment, but we don't see it used here every day. In Ferguson, though, the perception is a lot different given the unrest there, and it's that perception one chief tells us may be slightly misguided. It's not just Ferguson where police deploy armored vehicles and assault weapons. Across the country, law enforcement over the years have beefed up arsenals, much of it hand-me-down equipment from the military. In Pritchard, the department has an armored personnel vehicle and two Humvees, which were once used in the military, although the department has no tactical team. The use of this equipment much different than what we see in Ferguson. Severe weather events like hurricanes, things like that, because you can see the structure of the vehicle that it allows us to get into high water areas and things such as that to take uh, victims of that out of an area. Like Pritchard, most cities pay little, if anything, for the equipment, which include Humvees, machine guns, camouflage, even helicopters and planes. It's feeding a concern that police forces think of themselves not as officers, but soldiers. Not so, according to interim Pritchard Police Chief Michael Rowland, who dismisses the term militarized police. I think the, the term is overrated. I think it's overused a lot. There may be some times when a, a, a hardened response would be uh, appropriate, and that is in tactical situations. But, you know, that is such a small portion of what police officers do across the country. Police also insist they face well-armed criminals. In Ferguson, though, officials concede the majority of protesters are peaceful. It's only a small portion of the public they feel is forcing officers into a SWAT-style response. The question now, how does military equipment and tactics affect the police mission to serve and protect? I don't think anyone uh, uh, that is a police commander of any level would make a, a, a call to respond uh, in a tactical way without seriously considering the circumstances under which they had to respond. Now, when Pritchard does have a tactical situation in the city limits, it calls on outside agencies, the police does, for staff and equipment. Chief Rowland, Chief Rowland cautions folks not to think just about the vehicles and weapons from military surplus. He says his agency's most beneficial tool it's gotten from the military are laptops, which came at a cost the department otherwise could not afford, Greg. All right, good points. Thank you, Derek. Golf